Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube and Opera channel on LELB Society. Uh, I'm Dr. Hariri, the creator of LELB Society. You can see that here. Our domain is so easy, LELB.net. And uh, yeah, there are uh, various free services available for you if you just visit our website at LELB.net and the LLB Society and also we are so famous on Google and other search engines. In this session I'm going to teach you an English lesson uh, on direct and indirect speech, particularly indirect speech. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, okay, in order to focus on the difference between or differences between direct and indirect speech let me just read the uh, sentences that I have written. So, indirect speech, unlike, means dissimilar to direct uh, speech, unlike direct speech in English, is used to report that somebody has said or thought in a particular situation. Pay attention to the following examples. Direct speech. She said, with a pause, I am deeply upset about the way my father treated me, in quotation marks, or inverted commas. Okay, these are quotation marks. For example, if I just uh, quotation marks, you know, or inverted commas, these are quotation marks, and this. Okay. So when you use a direct speech, it means that you directly actually report some what somebody has said without changing that. So this part has not changed at all. See? Okay, but indirect speech. She, for example, you may not exactly remember what somebody has said. I mean, the wording or uh, the words that somebody has used to say something so you may report what somebody has said indirectly She said that she was deeply upset about the way her father had treated her So this is indirect speech and in indirect speech we don't have any uh, Quotation marks or inverted commas, okay So reporting verbs in English the most frequently used reporting verbs in English are say, tell, ask, state, declare, explain, announce, mention, remark, inform, respond, reply, indicate, point out, complain, promise, notify, and others, and the like. It means that actually this list is not just limited to these verbs note the word that which appears after the reporting verbs could be stated or implied this that that uh, in this example that this that is not all is not actually obligatory you can omit that okay this that and this that does not exist here in indirect speech okay I'm sorry in direct speech this that only appears in indirect speech okay so tense shift in reported speech a very significant point very important point to remember when the reported event refers to an action in the past then the tense of the reporting verbs should be simple past okay if it was in the past you know and correspondingly the verb tense in the direct speech should be modified for example alice said i can speak french fluently okay in quotation marks so alice said that she could speak French fluently. Remember, two things have changed. First of all, I changes to she because actually 
uh, it refers to Alice. So Alice is a female. So, and can has changed to could because it refers to the simple past tense and the simple past form of can is could. So, uh, all right. And the employee, another example, said, I was sick for a week in quotation marks. Okay. And the employee reported that this that in indirect speech is optional. That, but most of the time actually it exists. He had been sick for a week. So pay attention. Was changes to had been. Simple past changes to past perfect. Generally, we change the tense of the verb uh, one stage backward in time. So, uh, all right, so let's continue. Note, the modal auxiliary verbs should, must, had better. These are some flashcards that automatically pop up. Ought to, means should, do not change in indirect reported speech. So, for example, if in the direct speech we have should, in indirect speech we cannot just change should to should have plus past participle. Example, the teacher told Jack, you should study more. The teacher told Jack that he should study more because of should. As an, ex in a, as an exception. So we, do, we cannot say that the teacher told Jack that he should have studied more. Reported speech in questions. So, uh, to your information, I'm just reading out uh, the content of my website. And in order to access over 900 academic posts in English, alongside many, many numerous free English services, uh, I recommend you watch my website at lelb.net. LELB Society, in order to just have access to all of these services. LELB Society. Okay. And uh, the, uh, all of the uh, services are in English, so uh, our website is international. Okay. So, uh, note that questions in, in direct speech are, quest are not questions anymore. Okay, in fact, another flashcard, there are statements that are reported. So, they are reported questions, okay, but not questions anymore. The person who just mentions them is not actually waiting for an answer. That's why you should not use a question mark at the end of the reported sentences, even though they report the question. Uh, even though it's another flashcard. So it's a typical question, typical mistake that many people make. They put a question mark at the end of questions in indirect speech. This is wrong. Pay attention. For yes or no questions, use if, whether, whether, or whether or not. So uh these are subordinate conjunctions if for example whether these are subordinate conjunctions okay so john asked john asked did i pass the exam okay so this is a yes or no question i mean did I pass the exam? And uh, you might wonder what a yes or no question is. A yes or no question in English is, an, is a question whose answer is either yes or no. In order to answer this question, you should use or start your answer with either yes or no. That's why it's yes or no question. And remember, if you want to change a yes or no question from direct to indirect speech, you need to use either if, whether, or whether or not. 
So John said, John asked if, pay attention, if he had passed the exam. And that's why we don't have any question mark here. No question mark. Because it's not my question. I'm just, for example, I'm just reporting what John said. Not my question. So do not use this question mark here. That is the difference between direct and indirect speech. So John asked if, because, if it, because it is a yes or no question, if he had passed the exam. All right. What about WH questions? For WH questions, uh, <coughs> sorry, change the question or interrogative. Interrogative means actually question form uh, of the of the sentence to a statement. Uh, what are WH questions? For example. Uh, the questions or question elements or some conjunctions actually subordinate conjunctions uh, that start with W for example where when um, what who and whom whose and also how how much how many how often, how long, etc. These are WH questions. There are even actually more. For example, I remember one of the most important ones is which. Okay. So, Jonathan, Jonathan asked, which book should we study for the exam? direct question direct speech so Jonathan Jonathan asked which book they should study for the exam again first of all there is no question mark and there is no quotation mark either and pay attention which book here we have should we study this is a question for but here they should study statement not a question okay so here we don't have inversion because in question forms we have inversions but here there is no inversion this is the ordinary type or order of elements uh, in a statement so which book they should study instead of should they study this is a very important point Reporting orders or uh, request. By the way, this is inversion that may happen. Inversion. It means we change or reverse. Reverse the natural order of elements in a sentence. Okay, so uh, to indirectly report orders, commands, and requests, you need to use an infinitive with to. For example, my friend said, please return my book to the library. This is a um, request, you know, a very polite one because it starts with please. So my friend asked me, to return her book to the library uh, well here you see we use two plus infinitive what is an infinitive infinitive is the simple form of the verb uh, actually oh, we have two types of infinitive let's say actually whether it is with two it's here the case is with two two for example return and also we have bare infinitive. What is bare infinitive? Means the simple form of the verb without anything. So here the case would be just return. Okay. But here we need to have an infinitive with to. 
my friend asked me to return her book here my book changes to her book okay to the library so the sergeant commanded sergeant is a um, actually high rank in military uh, milieus or places or situations okay sergeant commanded attack the enemy in quotation marks the sergeant commanded the troops to attack the enemy okay so here troops is a group of soldiers okay to attack the enemy here that's simple how can you negate or actually change it to the neg to the negative form okay it's affirmative positive or affirmative but what about the negative form of the same or version of this sentence for example let me just okay the sergeant uh, commanded do not attack do not attack the enemy so how can you change it to the uh, actually in the regular speech the sergeant commanded them troops pay attention not to attack the enemy okay so let me review that's right so the sergeant commanded the troops not to just add not uh, before two okay place night not before two of course it should not be capitalized I just put it this way uh, to emphasize to emphasize it to emphasize it sorry so let me yeah just uh, wrote that this way to emphasize it so uh, the soldier the sergeant commanded the troops not to attack the enemy yeah for example another example my friend asked or said do not open the window my friend asked me not to open the window yeah my friend said do not open the window so my friend asked me not to pay attention to this not to open the window okay we come to the end of this uh, session let me see if there is something yeah here uh, at the end of this actually um, post you can also click here for English videos on YouTube and also English flashcards over 1400 English flashcards on Instagram and also if you have any question about this unit or this actually course you can use this comment form to leave your questions in the most practical way ever and also you can just uh, see some related English lessons actually about English grammar for example it, this one is all about common grammar mistakes this one is for adverb clauses in English and also conjugating irregular verbs these are just three examples of the uh, larger group or category of uh, English grammar lessons and also you can always just uh, subscribe to our English lessons uh, by just uh, via email you, you just write down your email here and you will receive our English courses and English lessons for IELTS and TOEFL for free. All right, thank you. Thank you very much for your attention. Please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Upper Hot to receive further English lessons for free. Thank you and bye bye.